Hello, uh, welcome to Juniper Nepros Learning Bite. Uh, my name is Maru Fiums. I'm a lab architect with Educational Services team. Uh, in this learning bite, I'm going to be showing you how to deploy a VMX router on EVNG Community Edition. Okay. Uh, so, what is EVNG? Okay. EVNG uh, stands for Emulated Virtual Environment Next Generation. So, this is according to their website. Um, and uh, it's a great tool for learning uh, new interconnected technologies such as networking, virtual and so on, where you can import uh, your VM images uh, into the Avenger server, and then you can create connections between them, and, and you can uh, bring up build your own topology, and then uh, you know to learn uh, those technologies. Okay, and you can share uh, the topology with others as well. Most of the operations on MNG server is managed through the uh, web UI for the uh, community edition, as far as I can tell, and that's, that can change in the future. I mean, but but uh, the only part that you have to do use uh, SSH uh, is uh, SCP is to bring up images in the server, and then once you do that, import it and then you should go to use it. server can be deployed on uh, new generation PCs, bare metal servers, hypervisor, and the cloud. Okay, they have documentation on their site. Uh, for different deployment types that you can you can use follow uh, along. Okay, uh, in my case, I'm using a ESXi environment where I deployed the FNG server VM uh, through an ISO and went to the installation like any other one to installation along similar. This is based on the market. And uh, went to the uh, installation and uh, enabled hardware assistant virtualization on the CPU of the VM so that you know I can run uh, VMs inside deploy VMs inside my MNG uh, KVM uh, instance, okay? For this uh, demonstration, I'm using Community Edition, which is free to use as of today. Uh, there are paid versions with more features and support, but uh, in many cases, you know, you can learn a lot of things with just the Community Edition, that's what I can tell. But if you want to support the project, you can you can definitely use the free version. Uh, so most Juniper virtual appliances can be run on MNG. Uh, you know, I haven't had any issue with VSREG, VMX, or VKFX yet, or VRR. So, and you can learn more about their latest features and requirements from their website, link as shown here. Uh, without further ado, let's start the demonstration process. And I'm gonna exit out from this, and I'm gonna SSH to the AVNG server VM that I have. Okay, so I'm already SSH to it, uh, and going to the VMX, right? So the VMX, uh, image that I downloaded from the uh, Juniper Network support site is, is basically uh, downloaded here, okay, under this directory, under root images. And you can have a different directory if you want, but in my case, I kept it here. And, and this TGZ file is the one uh, that I downloaded. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is extract this file. It's going to take a while, I believe. Oh, sorry. Okay, go to the extraction of the uh, tar file. And then the plan is once uh, the extraction is completed, we're gonna follow along some steps uh, that are highlighted here, something similar here under the uh, EVNG how to uh, page here. So there are you know, instructions for different kind of appliances that you want to use. And then we're gonna follow almost similar what we have here. So there are, as you know, VMX have two VMs. One is the VCP, which is the routing in, and the other one is the farting plane, the VFPVM, and uh, those are the two VM, and then so you have to deploy both of those folder, okay? So uh, we're gonna first uh, create a directory with our version number for each one. I'm gonna copy this, this one. Uh, looks like the fraction is still going, just a pretty uh, heavy image. So once we you know create those two folders, we're gonna Put those uh, QCOM to file from, from each of those uh, images. There are specific folder, and there are specific uh, naming convention you follow for uh, the for the files, right? Has to be format folder. Okay, that's how it is. Okay, so it's a pretty big file. I'm going to pause the video real quick and then I'll come back when the extraction is complete. Okay, looks like our extraction is completed. See, we have the folder here. I can get rid of this uh, VMX, bundle file. 
there's some storage and there's my BMX. Now I have this uh, images under the images uh, locations. Okay, so we're gonna go to the create those directories first, okay? Which is I'm gonna copy, uh, create the BCP folder first. Okay, I'm gonna give it a version name similar to what I got here. We're doing 21.4. Or R1.12. Okay. Then create the folder and I'm going to do CP and copy. I'm going to change it. Okay. I'm going to change it to a version here. One point two, one point one two, and this is gonna be under the images, the images, and uh, one point two. It's pretty long. Let's see if it works. Oh, it kind of didn't work. Okay, so. No such file or directory. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what I mean. Probably has some typo. Word. IOA. Dot Q file 2. I wish they had this part on the web UI, but you know, not. Okay, so it's gonna copy the file, and we're gonna do the same thing for the uh, so that's VCP, and there's a second file that is the metadata. Or what is that? Uh, VMX HDD. Okay, so let's do that. CP images, VMX HDD. I'm going to choose the same directory. Okay. I'm going to change to var IOB. This has two images. That is done. Okay. And oh, there is another one, which is the metadata. Okay. Let's do that as well. P e and so it will be the metadata USB, so three images. E-RE. Okay. We're done with the VCP. Uh, now I'm going to do the VFP folder. Our make sure we have the version right at 21.4. Okay, we created that. Copy this. Okay, and now this time, you know, let's go to the image of the key. It's better. TP uh, VFPC the date. So uh, there's only one, looks like it be a PC name with the date of 2021, 11, 15. I think that's probably it for you this. Okay, under the single folder, I'm going to call it BERT IOA UCloud 2. Okay, looks like this image is a bit bigger. I should have just uh, moved it. It's going to take some time. And then once uh, it's just copied, uh, to the directory, we can gonna uh, run uh, this command, the fix permissions command. We basically uh, fix the permissions uh, on these folders and then read the text so that will be, those images then will be discoverable from the uh, grid. Okay. So looks like it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna do a quick pause again. I'll be back once it's done.
Okay, so it looks like uh, our uh, our copy is done. So now we can run this fix permission command. Don't know why we're removing stuff, but I, I keep the images there for now. If you want, you can follow that. Okay, this is when we're from the fixed permission stuff. Okay, it's done. So, so it looks like it's done copying the uh, images. So I'm gonna then now log into the web GUI, uh, which is through the uh, in this IP address that I have. It can be different depending on the environment. So uh, I'm just gonna log in. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just uh, close this lab. I think it opened from previous video. I'm just gonna create a new one. It's a new lab, just a blank. VMX demo. I don't need to put anything here now, but you can put depending on your scenario and description task name. Uh, I'm gonna click save. I got a blank uh, canvas here. So I'm gonna add uh, an object, which is gonna be my uh, node. It's gonna be uh, Juniper VMX. There you go. You see those uh, blue form before it was sprayed out. VMX and VFP. So I'm gonna use VMX PCP first. I'm gonna call the name default. I can change to VMX1 VCP. Two interfaces for VCP VM, and I keep it everything default. I think that is MX here, icon. And you can change to something else if you want. Leave it default, uh, nothing special here. I'm gonna click on save. I'm gonna drag it here. It's my VCP VM. And then to add now the VFP. Okay, the same way. Okay, so that will be number notes one. And then, uh, I get uh, well, I'll keep that icon as uh, PFE icon. Looks better. And then uh, VFP, the max and Nick, I believe it said in the documentation 12, but I'm, I don't need that many. I'm going to just choose uh, uh, you know, core and CPU. I keep it default, memory default. You can increase it depending on your size of your environment, but I'll keep it default. Uh, everything else I'll keep it default. Save. And then I'm going to connect this together through direct link. Okay. Drag to here. And I'm going to choose EM1 in both. Okay. Done. EM1. And let's add a Cloud network. Sorry. Add an object, the network. Let's give it a name. VREXT, which is probably our uh, management network. And uh, I will choose Cloud One, so it's going to be all internal. And you can find more about different cloud networks uh, that we just, it's like a network bridge as internal to this uh, EVNG, uh, or it could be tied to each one of the uh, EVNG server if you have one. I'm more on the community uh, cookbook. I'm more of a different And I'll save it. That seemed to work good for me. Yeah. And then I'm going to connect this to. So I'm going to choose EM0, FXP0. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, EM0, FXP0, done. Now, let's see, a little better. A little better. I'm gonna add a Linux server. Add note, I have Linux. You know what, I'll just do, yeah, Linux is fine. That's gonna be 1024 Mac, on CPU. Call it uh, server. Everything is simple. I, one link is fine for me. That. Add that to this. 
the okay say now i'm done right so my goal is to basically being able to connect to this vmx from this and see the ipc and all that so that way we know it's all good uh, i'm gonna just go more actions and start all nodes go to the startup process and that may take a while uh, and i'm gonna just gonna issue the start in all of those so as you see so it's moving right now detect the uh, vfp right so that's all starting I think I see also starting. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when they're fully booted and I will configure some IP on the VMX, like a basic IP address on the 50 and see if I can connect, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like our uh, BCPs are and VFP all settled down after I booted them as well as the Linux server. And I, I uh, configured a basic IP address on the VMX uh, BCP and uh, on the Linux server as well. So uh, I'm just gonna uh, SSH to this. Uh, from, the, from the Linux server, I'm gonna SSH to the VMX one, once I log into the VMX one, okay? So I'm gonna click on it, then root, okay? So pass VFPC, I have uh, the, as you see, the VFP is online, that is good. Communicating uh, the VFP is communicating with the VCP, and then show interfaces, servers, match in. So I have FXP0, it's up uh, on this IP address, okay? And my Linux server is on 172.25.11.254. I can ping it, which is good. Let me see if I can access to it from the Linux server, okay? So I'm going to bring it up. That's nice. Okay, that's a good sign so far. There you go. I message to that through this management network. So that's about it. Uh, just as basic development as it can be. Uh, and then hopefully that will give you some starting point and uh, you know learn more about uh, different uh, technologies related to VMX and, and, and uh, I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.